Hey everyone, my name's Courtney and I'm here with Alana and this is our presentation 6 for Engineering 305. So this video is about time series data analysis forecasting. We're going to be using some da a data set in Jump to describe the methods to create a time series forecast. Then we're going to describe how to analyze the model and discuss the accuracy of the model. And finally, we'll describe how to predict out into future H periods. So just a little bit about it time series is that it's a set of measurements y t taken over equally spaced time periods. Some examples that include daily stock price, monthly sales, and quarterly GDP. You would use OLS regression to fit y of t as a function of time. You would use autoregressive to fit y of t as a function of its past values. And you would use moving average to fit y of t as a function of random noise. Um, autoregressive and moving average can also be referred to as ARIMA models for when the data is being differenced. So before we go into JUMP to do our demonstration, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the methodology that JUMP uses for forecasting time series. So first it uses Box Jenkins methodology. Um, you should check that the time series data you're working with is stationary. So you can examine the sample autocorrelations and partial autocorrelations in JUMP to um, help you make an initial guess of a small value for P and Q. You would fit your data to an ARIMA PDQ model, and the PDQ are the orders for autoregression, differencing, and moving average. Finally, um, JUMP performs the diagnostic checks to confirm that the model is consistent with the data, and you can repeat the last two steps to fit alternative models and compare which one um, seems to be more accurate. And now Alana is going to take us over to JUMP for our demonstration. So going into JUMP, we're going to be using the data set called GNP. And that stands for Gross National Product. So the first thing we want to do is to analyze what the data is actually doing. So we're going to go to Graph and then click on Graph Builder. And from here, I'm going to put Gross National Product in the Y column and then the date in the X. So right here you can see there's some type of trend going on but like Courtney stated earlier that we want to have data that's stationary. So to fix this, an easy way to do that is to transform the data. So I'm going to right click on the Y column that I use so that will be the gross national product and I'm just going to put transform and then click log because that's what's normally used when transforming any data that you have. So now it's created this column right here and I'm just going to put that up here to compare it and you can see it's more of a straight line now so there's um, the trend is taken out. So now that we see that we can X out of this and now I need to create another column so I'm going to double click and then I'm going to right click and click on property um, column properties formula and then go into transcendental and then click on log and then again the gross national product um, so this giving the formula of what we're, we want in that column six there so I'm gonna click OK and it gives you the different um, variables the different um, data points and then I'm going to rename this so we can actually know what's going on with it let me see so I'm going to call it log GNP, again standing for gross um, national product, and then I'll put in parentheses billions because that's what the um, money is actually in. And then I'll click OK again. So I just renamed that, that's all I did. And now we're going to actually do the time series analysis. So we go to analyze and then modeling and go over here to time series. So now we want to look at the log which is what I just transformed and then we're gonna put date in the X where it says time ID. So um, right here is where you can change the number of periods you want to go out so we're gonna forecast 25 periods because that's what it was set as originally. I'm gonna click OK and first, this is what you what pops up. It's showing the autocorrelation, which um, coincides with the moving average, and it also shows the partial 
autocorrelation, which is more of the autoregressive um, model, which Courtney explained earlier. So now going from there, so I'm going to click this red arrow in the corner, and we want to do the difference so it takes out more trend. So let me show you. Right here, you see how it's like bending outward. We want to make that a straight line. So I'm just going to put order of one, a differencing order of one, and click estimate, and scroll down, and as you can see, it changed it. So now we have more straight lines here. And so this is the model that we want to look at because it's showing that it doesn't have any trend in the data. It's giving a more exact um, result of what we need. So looking at the partial autocorrelation, we can look at the number, the lags, and then look at how far these bars are pushing out. So if the bar is pushing further than this blue line here, then that means that the this specific lag is significant. And we really don't want that, so a way to fix that would be to click on the arrow again and go to Arima. And since, again, it's at 1, we want to say 1 right here. And remember, we just did it at a difference of order 1, so I'm going to add that in as well. And I'm going to click on Estimate. And this is what it gives us. It's checked right here because that's what it's showing in this graph here. So looking at the AIC score, that's a really important thing because if we wanted to compare different models that we wanted to conduct, we would want to have the lowest AIC score. And going down a little bit further, we can see the significance of each lag and um, if it's significant or not. Um, and then right here we can see our forecast model, what we just did. And look at our residuals there. And this is with all the lags um, inside of this blue margin with the corrected correlate, the autocorrelation and the partial autocorrelation. So if we're good with this, then from here we can actually look at our data table that comes from this specific model. So right here, as you can see, the forecast and then the different confidence intervals, which is in blue. So now I want to say that we're good with this. So I'm just going to click on model and then the red arrow in model and then say save prediction formula. And then it's giving us the same values, but then if we scroll down a little bit further, we can actually see where it's forecasting. You see where these are, there's no values here. This is the forecast in these 25 here. And it goes to, down to 151. So those are the new values that we see. So thank you for watching another one of our videos. We hope this was insightful and it helps in your conducting of different models as well. Thank you.